Good afternoon, folks. This is Bell Gild, and this is June the 11th, Sunday, the last day of Flight SimCon. And for this afternoon, the only thing that was on order was to go around and take video of as much things as I could, including this guy right here. Only the cool passenger, right? Yeah, maybe a couple of us. I don't know about you, yeah. but when I think of cool, I think of a bunch of dudes standing behind a guy on a flight simulator. Like, yeah. Well, in that case, I won't tell you about my morning this morning. Are you doing true? <laughs> Ty set up shop on Friday night, and him and a bunch of other Twitch streamers had a panel discussion that they participated in on Saturday, which unfortunately I didn't get a chance to see. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cat Strader, Mr. Ty Shuff. He is live streaming live so from Flight SimCon. To, now we don't know if it's yeah, us. Yeah, one more time. And he's already got a ready-made audience. If you're not familiar with Ty's work, go check him out on Twitch and also on YouTube. Every Friday, he does a live stream using X-Plane on Pilot Edge. Awesome. Really awesome stuff. I was honored to meet Ty last year at Flight SimCon when he gave me his business card and told me a little bit about X-Plane, which actually helped to prompt my decision to purchase X-Plane between him and Frugal discussing it with me at length over the course of last year's uh, get-together. So it's great to see that uh, he's finally got Twitch partnership and he is the consummate professional. Let me take a look at your setup here. Alright, so we're going to San Diego, both 7 Laval, ask file, both the time being 7, 7177 7, 7, transplant. I'm going to say that probably wasn't an accident. Nicholas! Oh, crap. My voice is shot. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Bolas, thank you for five months of support, man. He says thanks for the great entertainment. I say thanks for thanks, If thanks you do for show up in a Twitch here. live stream that Castrator is doing, he will call yeah, out Kat, your name. Pilot, yeah. And he if you subscribe to him, he actually has uh, little sure icons that you will get <laughs> for each month of Very subscription that you give him. And of course, he raises his glass to you, and usually he'll have something alcoholic with you. He really lucked out because his booth was literally right next door to Pilot Ed, so if he had any issues whatsoever, they could fix it for him on the fly. All right, we'll let Mr. Shuff get back to work here. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, Cat Strader, live and in person. Really awesome dude. The link to his channel is below. And let's take a quick look at Boston Virtual ARTCC. A lot of people don't know, but Flight SimCon was born out of an event that Boston Virtual ARTCC used to do years ago in this very hotel. They actually started in one little conference room and it grew over the years into what we have been witnessing all weekend. So, in typical fashion, they're going back to their roots. And they're all in here in one little conference room. So as you can see, they've got the Tracon all set up. There's a lot of them that are working tower. There's a full flight sim set up there, so I'm sure he's probably interfacing with everyone else. And the gentleman over here is Evan. He is the guy, the mastermind behind Flight SimCon itself. And this is his baby. <laughs> How's traffic going today, Evan? So far, so good. Excellent. Excellent. I'm doing fine. Yeah, these guys take it seriously. And honestly, I can say that they are on point because having just done that real life flight myself, that's pretty much exactly what the tower says. So yeah, these guys, they know their stuff. They know their stuff. So there we go, Boston Virtual, ARTCC. Howdy folks, Belgio here again, and we are looking at the TFDI 717. These guys have been working diligently on it, and they've also been making sure that it's compatible with prepared version 4, as well as the usual retinue of clients like FSX, FSX Steam, and so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, the um, footage that you may have seen earlier 
for fly inside utilized this same aircraft. So right now they're doing a shared cockpit demonstration. And we just take a quick look, see what they're up to. So what are you using for your shared cockpit? Uh, we're actually using our own integrated uh, shared cockpit uh, provided through our uh, add-on manager and the tablet. So it's built into the actual aircraft? Wow. It's actually something that came with the aircraft itself. Huh. So what we're about to demo is, is we're about to demo uh, low speed protection, correct? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, low speed. So every pilot fly let's go ahead and kill the other flight, and let's go ahead and uh, open those up here and see what's up. Excuse me. So it's actually got low speed protection built into it to prevent stalls. He's fighting the aircraft. The aircraft is trying its, it's best to try and force forward to at least level off the aircraft. To its counterpart, what it does, Donald Douglas. That is pretty neat. That is really neat. As we start to approach the higher range of the speed threshold, it will automatically reduce engine power to make sure that it saves us. I just want to remind you folks that this is the same aircraft that I was just sitting in, in the fly inside me. And let me tell you, they modeled every single detail of this aircraft. I actually flew in a 717 on one of my flights into Flights and Con. I can confirm, having taken a look at the cockpit on my way out of the aircraft, this is exactly what it looks like. So the fidelity that these guys have put into this, and then of course the uh, addition of all the various features which they're in the process of discussing right now, just makes this thing an absolute must get if you're into your airliners. One thing that you'll notice on the right hand side, the right screen, you'll see what looks like an iPad stuck underneath the window. There's one on either side for the pilot and the co-pilot. Both of those contain all the little extra features and also the capability to use that shared cockpit that they were talking about, which is a proprietary system that is built in with this aircraft. Yes, an observer also would be able to sit and monitor the flight. My not flying is only limited to uh, flight control, pilot flying, and of course, in the whole aircraft. Uh, an observer can also strap down to their seat and have it on their ride. Awesome. It's incredible. All right, folks. So, now that we've done those, another thing that this plane can do that we've got to show off is that under most conditions, you see nothing, there's no alerts, there's no lights, there's no warnings. If you do misconfigure the airplane or for some reason something is wrong with it, you will see that. We're going to demo a couple things here. Um, so let's go ahead and actually, let's just pull the fire handle. So he's going to right 
going to plug it into the torque. That's going to kill fuel to the engine. The electrical alert is now come on because the generator is reset. We started to lose some of our cabin information. Now as we deploy the fire hot one, this is to simulate if we had a fire, which this will extinguish a flame if there is one in the engine. We're going to see some of those lights start to come on. We're going to see the warnings come up that our fire age is low. Again, this is now happening on the other machines as well, for sure. Both, both pilots are now experiencing this together. So in the event of this, now if you look down at the engine display, we have an engine that's still on the low display. We now have not only the fire agent warning, but all this little bit of warning for the pneumatic, electrical, and some sort of system associated with the engine shut down and the fire to auto. We can see the manifold temperature and pressure on the left side of the pneumatic system starting to reduce. The throttles have picked up to compensate for having lost the engine until all throttle had disconnected because a single engine failure does result in the auto throttle system being inhibited. At this point it was now revert to manual pilot control as an emergency would be declared. The rest of the auto flight system will continue to function uh, minus autopilot, or minus auto throttle rather. Now you guys both know how to break this plane as well as I do, so let's let's turn it up a little bit. Let's see how bad we can make it. <laughs> let's, let's mess with as much as we can and try to get as many alerts and problems to have as possible. The question we often get asked is, does it support failures? And the textbook answer is no, because we don't have a menu that says yes, my left bus fail. However, if this happens, if a fire pops up, if you deploy your fire bottles, if you turn off your electrics, you'll start to see displays blank out. You'll lose data on some of the screens. Hmm. Auto flight will fail when whatever bus is powering it loses power. So, yeah, let's go to kill, kill both. Let's switch to standby power. Kill both generators. We just lost auto flight. Ooh, okay. We can no longer have anything powering it. We switched to standby. This is now battery backup through emergency power. We now have 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, the remaining screens will die because the battery is not there. It's not going to stop. Oh, now, if you flip the emergency power, we're going to get the generator back on. So they're in a completely dead plane right now, but it's still running on battery backup, which lasts 60 minutes, real time. Uh, if we lose our cabin pressurization, the same system will happen here. We, we actually probably just did lose cabin pressure. Thank you, not at this moment. So we're now operating on one engine in a severely uh, altered flight. The aircraft is not telling the pilot there's something wrong. If we switch back to standby power, we're going to see about 15 alerts come up on the screen. We're going to go to kill the generators again. Emergency lighting should now come on. It's daytime, so you don't see any flooding. If we bring up the engine display, which you've got here on the right screen, you can now see all the things that happen with the airplane. Just, just about every one of these alerts is indicative of an actual logic simulated in the airplane. These are not just there to fluff it up. There are some minor ones that have no bearing on the plane, but when you see hydraulic pump fail, or you see, in this case, the air data heat off, the logic is actually off. It is not running at this point. So now this is telling us what's wrong with the airplane. At this point, obviously, an emergency would have been declared after the first engine failure. So this, this would now simulate a left and right uh, generator failure. At this point, we've now completely reduced the backup. To answer the question of does it support failures, yes, it will handle them. No, you can't set one yourself. Now, if normally we wouldn't be able to do this. It would be great if it were a plane when something went wrong and you just turn it back on. In this case, we're going to do that because I do want to show some of the other things. I want to make sure we covered all of that. Of course, on a strictly visual sense, we did spend time. We saw the visors a little bit earlier. We got to go over some of those things as we mess around the cockpit. Oh, the whole cockpit does have its detail. The area under the glare shield has the stickers, the windows have their decals, the visors slide around and are nice. in, the, uh, in the transparent as they should be. All the lights fade on and off, they don't snap. So if you guys actually do all the, uh, the right light tests. Uh, you guys see our light tests? No. Here talk about some of the visual things. I get to talk to him up. Let me look at the master warning here. 
you can, you can actually see it's just kind of fading in and out instead of just snapping. All the lights in there, seeming like a more natural you know, light pyro. Wow. The displays were all done as overlays over the real aircraft. The picture of the actual display was used to trace them all. Mm -hmm. so they're all within a couple of pixels of reality. Oh, wow. Huh. So this is as real as it gets. Just about every switch in the cockpit works and does yeah. what it's supposed to be doing. Huh. I, I can count on one hand the number of switches that aren't there. So even that, like the light dimming functions, the mm. uh, ATC the transponder toggles, things like that, they all work. Some of them have no bearing on the simulator because of just limitations of the engine, but right. the switch is still there. And any logic associated with pressing it is also added. Even at the fire fault test, which there was very little reference for, actually thanks to the for letting us know how that works. Uh, if you do the fault test first, then we'll do the fire test. The fault test on the right side, when he presses this, you'll see it's an alerts come up. This is doing its internal test to verify that the fault, the fire detection system is properly being read. Can you please add in a place-bearing distance waypoint? 
this is done by entering in where you'd like to go. In this case, we use uh, KALB, which is Albany Airport, we're flying. You type in a slash, that's going to be your bearing, so it'll be 170, and another slash, and then this day, say 5. That's going to create a waypoint that exists at bearing 170 to 5 miles based on Albany. BBD01 is now a waypoint. We could spend all day just talking about the CDU, especially this one in particular. The, uh, the 717 and MD11 CDUs are very unique and they're very finicky. So there's a lot of little things that they do that I don't even particularly like, but they actually do it. So it's something we had to do. Now, we've got about another five minutes. If you guys think you can clean it up and get it out of the ground in the next five minutes, let's do that because that'll give us a perfect place to do our announcement. Alright. So we'll get to see the work rest of the approach here. We've got to let them do what they do. These guys have worked a long time. The big announcement that they had to share with us was a partnership with FSFX Packages where they've got the 717 Immersion. So we're going to cut to that footage right now and we'll show you a little bit of what this looks like with the Immersion system installed. Hopefully everybody will be as excited as I am. All right, so we're about to get a new announcement, so an exclusive to, uh, for the TFDI 717. Okay, so, what we're here to show today, thanks to this man, is hopefully the new 717 Immersion from FSFX. So, here we have volumetric lighting. Um, obviously, that's a staple of FSFX. In my uh, not so official pamphlet provided by him, we have all the features that are going to be coming with the 717 including touchdown rain effects, on trails, jet blast, which I guess I'll give you a little presentation of. It's going to be hard to see it. Let me actually, I'll turn up the visibility so you guys can see the weather. Put our face in it. Yeah, we'll put our face in it. Um, You can see the jet blast effect behind the aircraft coming off of the water. Um, and it will also include wheel spray and you know, do you wanna do you wanna talk about what it will include? Yeah, it's well, your it's product. Yeah, I could, I could, I guess. <laughs> so touch on the fan contrails, jet blast, wheel spray also. So in great effect so the wheels will spray some water. It's not finished yet, I guess there are a few issues but, Yeah. Uh, Wing condensation, as you'd expect, brake dust, cold start smoke, volumetric lighting, volumetric rain, uh, and uh, some gas trails also. Wow. The gas trails are going to be nice on this one. I think it really goes very well with the dynamic lights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they play very well. Let's go ahead and hop on board. Oh, it's a little dark. Kevin, your chase plane doesn't like middle mouse buttons. I know. It's always yeah, I've always been chasing I'll change it to a little bit. Let's say if you want to get a real low vis and kind of fly through some clouds and see all those lights yeah. start to shine. Uh, it's fun. Here we go. Alright. Um, this is Shift L. Shift L? Okay. I'll, uh, Have what? Well, it's going to load up the flight faster. I'll stop. Yeah. If you go to so, in case you missed the audio or the audio is not loud enough, essentially what's happening here is they've just announced that uh, they're working with FSFX packages to add the visual and uh, various other effects to the 717. And it looks amazing. The video really doesn't do it justice. It looks amazing. You can see the beacon light if it's. It was on there earlier. Um, if we get a little bit closer in, you'll see it. You can see it kind of. I didn't assign the move around because they're a default move key. No. No? Okay. Hold on one second. Use the slider in the UI.
and they're using right. chase plane to modify the views. So here you can see the volumetric beacon lights that he's done, and. It really goes well with the new dynamic lighting system that's pr with prepared before. It's a great combination because of the fact that the volumetric lights are a part of it and you have dynamic lighting, it'll light things up. It looks, needless to say, pretty dope. I don't like it. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> That's a foggy night. That is a foggy night. That's more than six six six. Wow. before we the gear. Oh, we can't even see cinematic. Yeah, that's that's as real as it gets. Are you flying straight? Wow. I have no idea. I just slapped <laughs> autopilot on. It could be flying us to the ground right now. I have no idea. As long as I would only do that if I knew I had standing here in awe, folks. This thing just looks amazing. Can you imagine what this looks like in VR as well? Wow. So there you guys go. So I'll go ahead and just hop outside. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to change the weather down just to 1.8 real quick so, you, so we can do some, uh, some cinematic mode. I know how to fly the aircraft. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> so there you go, folks. That is the TFDI 717. Now with FSFX packages. Absolutely amazing. Alright, so that was our big announcement, folks. TFDI. And this is Bell Geo. Now we'll be back with some more Lights Simcon 2017.